<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Look out, it's a stampede. Yes, it's a stampede to the breakfast table when Mom pours out heaping bowlfuls of Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice and then covers them with smooth, thick yellow cream and sliced bananas or some other fruit. Yes, siree. You rush to get a taste of this deluxe breakfast. The tender crispness and delicious nut-like flavor of Quaker Puff wheat or rice topped with rich cream and fruit are mouth-watering good. Try it. Remind Mom to get Quaker Puff rice and Quaker Puff wheat tomorrow for sure. Two men, traveling by dog sled, moved along the windswept trail toward Whitehorse. One was large and rough-looking. The other was a well-built young man whose determined and bitter expression made him seem older than his 25 years. Young Ned Tyler had teamed up with Hank Jackson at Skagway for the trip to the Yukon. And as they neared their destination, Hank finally expressed a thought that had been on his mind since their meeting. Uh, Ned... We agreed to team up for this trip. I mentioned that I knew where we might stick a claim together that'd pay off. You said then you weren't coming up here to dig for gold. That's right. Mush! Mush, you husky! I have been wondering just what you are coming up here for. I got some personal business to attend to. Uh, Sure must be something mighty serious, Ned. I don't reckon I've seen you smile once since we met. It's serious to me, Hank. I worked my way from Frisco to Seattle, and from there to Skagway. I worked long enough to get cash for this dog team and supplies. You see, Hank, if you really want to know the truth, I'm going to White Horse to kill a man. Mush! Mush! Ned's sudden disclosure of his purpose in going to White Horse had shocked his companion into silence for the balance of the trip. It wasn't until they were settled in a small hotel room in White Horse that Hank had nerve enough to bring up the subject again. Well, Ned, I got to admit you took me by surprise out on the trail when you said you were coming here to kill a man. I figure you don't really mean what you said, though. I do mean it, Hank. But the law will say it's murder, Ned, and it will be. I don't know the law anything. They kept me in jail for two years for something I didn't do. Now, son, the law has to go by what it thinks is right. Sometimes it makes mistakes when the evidence is against a man, I reckon, but... Oh, I don't blame the law, Hank. The evidence was against me, all right. But the dirty coyote who planted the evidence and testified against me is going to pay for what he did. What makes you think he's in Whitehorse, Ned? I found out he left Frisco for Seattle. I went there and hunted for him everywhere. Then I finally found out he was in Whitehorse. What's his name? Oh, no. No, I'm not telling, Hank. No use taking the chance that you'll warn him about me being here. Oh, look, son. You better give up the idea. No, Hank, you can't change my mind. The Mounties will get you. You'll hang for murder if you go through with it. Maybe. Right now, let's stop talking about it. We can both do us some rest. But let's turn in and get some sleep. Early the following morning, while Ned Tyler still slept, Hank Jackson slipped out of the hotel and made his way to the cabin Sergeant Preston used when he was in Whitehorse. I sure hope the sergeant's in town. 
Yep. Hey, Sergeant's here, all right. That's King Bargain. Well, hi, Sergeant. Oh, Hank, come in out of the coal. Uh, <laughs> look at that. King remembers me, too. Hello there, fella. When you got uh, back to Whitehorse, Hank? I uh, come in last night. Made the trip through the pass with the young fella I met in Skagway. Huh? I'm sure glad to find you in town, Sergeant. I usually hit here this time of year. Sit down. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Nothing wrong, Hank? Uh-huh. Leastwise, there's going to be if something isn't done about it. What do you mean? There's likely to be a killing, Sergeant, that's what. Who is the would-be killer, Hank? Oh, uh, he's a young fellow I came up with. Name is Ned Tyler. I sort of took a liking to him, and I hate to see him so set on doing a thing like that. It's up to me to see if he doesn't. Where is he? I left him at the hotel sleeping. Maybe if you talk to him. That's what I intend to do right now. I'll go to the hotel before he has a chance to leave. Sergeant Preston left King at the cabin and went to the hotel with Hank Jackson. Ned, who was dressing, looked up as they entered the room. Uh, morning, Ned. Hey, Armani, what's the idea of bringing the law here, Hank? Take it easy, Taylor. I came here to give you some friendly advice. Yes, Ned, this is Sergeant Preston, a good friend of mine. Maybe so, but he represents the law, and i got no use for lawmen. What's more, I don't need any advice. Don't mind if I sit down, do you? Looks like you're sitting whether I like it or not. Now, look you here, Ned. No use being unfriendly to Sergeant Preston. I, I asked him to come here. I suppose you told him why I came here, too, huh? Yes, he did, Tyler. He said you came here to kill somebody. Is that right? Maybe I did. What of it? You don't think I'll let you go through with such a thing, do you? I suppose you intend to put me in jail to keep me from doing it. But you can't keep me there forever. I have no charge to hold you on unless you threaten some certain person. Then why don't you let me alone until I do? No, look, Ned, I don't know what happened in the past, but something evidently made you bitter enough to want revenge. That's right. Taking someone's life isn't going to help. You'd hang for it, Ned. Neither Hank nor I want to see you make a mistake. Naturally, as one of the police, I'm bound to see that you don't carry out your threat. You want to tell me what made you so bitter, Ned? Well... Uh, go ahead, Ned. The sergeant only wants to help you. That's right, Hank. I do want to help if I can. Well, all right, sergeant. I'll tell you what happened. A little over three years ago, another fellow and myself worked as tellers in a Frisco bank. I see. One day, a shipment of new money came in, $20,000. I checked it and signed the receipt for it, and the messenger left. Just then, the hombre I mentioned called to me from the next window. Said he felt dizzy. Then what? He asked me to get a glass of water for him quick. I went and got the water and brought it back to him. Then I put my initials on the bundle of new bills and put them in the vault with my tabulation attached. That night, he stopped by my hotel room. What for? He said he came to thank me for taking care of him when he felt sick that day. Huh? I thought it was funny to make a special trip to see me, but, well, then I forgot it for the time being. Yes, he could have thanked you the next day. Yes, I know. The next day, the cashier called me. He said the bundle of new bills was short $2,000. Oh, that's a lot of cash to be short. Yes, it is, Hank. They blame me. That afternoon, the sheriff searched my room and found $500 worth of the new bills. They was planted there, you think? I know they were. But that ornery coyote swore he didn't visit me at all. And nobody saw him come there. You believe he took the cash when you went to get the water for him, is that it? Yes. But he said I lied about that, too. I went to jail for two years, Sergeant. When I got out, I started hunting for him. I figured now the hunt's about ended. Who is the man you followed here? His... His name is Slick Baker. Oh, he runs like a cafe. Uh, I never did like that hombre. I always figured he was behind some of the underhanded things that have happened here in Whitehorse. Yes, I know, Hank. But he's very careful to keep within the law. Ned... Is your gun on the bureau here? Uh, yes, it is. I'll take care of it for now, you. Now, wait a minute, You'll get Sergeant. it back in due time. I don't want you to get hot-headed and get into trouble, son. Well, it looks like my trip up here is going to be spoiled because I got talked into saying too much. Oh, uh, Ned, you just trust Sergeant Preston. That's all I got to say. Sure. It looks like I have to now. You won't be sorry, Ned. I have a plan that may clear your name and be the means of putting Slick Baker where he belongs, behind bars. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment.
When you're traveling up here in the Yukon, you never can tell what kind of a scary adventure you're going to have next. Like the other evening, for instance. I was just about... Rain up there, mister. It's an ambush. I'm trapped. Don't make a move if you want to stay healthy. I'm after one thing. Your gold. Gold? I'm not a prospector. Don't pull that where you got it hit. But I have no gold. Quit stalling. What's in them packages? Oh, well, that's the swellest tasting ready-to-serve breakfast cereal from here to Dawson. It's the cereal shot from guns. Guns? Guns? What way? I mean that Quaker puffed wheat yeah. and Quaker puffed rice yeah. are shot from guns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what good are those guns? Say, when the choice premium grains of wheat and rice are shot from those guns, they're exploded up to eight times normal size. What? Eight times? You betcha. That makes them bigger and better tasting. They're crisp. Tender with bang up nut like flavor, too, in every mouthful. But I'm after gold, buddy. How do I know there's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in them packages you're carrying? Oh, that's easy to prove. Just take a look at these packages. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Yeah. And notice the red and blue colors of the Quaker puffed wheat and rice packages. Always red and blue, huh? Then, of course, there's the smiling picture of the Quaker man on the front. That makes it the real McCoy? It sure does. As you fellas and girls know, too, that's your guarantee of getting the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Believe me, your appetite strikes it rich when you pour out a heaping bowlful of those tenderly crisp, melt-in-your-mouth kernels and top them with milk or cream and fruit. What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give you fellas and girls added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So every morning, enjoy this delicious, nourishing treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue. After telling Ned and Hank part of his plan, Sergeant Preston took Ned back to his cabin with him. Later that morning, Hank went to the cafe. Hank Jackson's come back. Well, well, what are you doing? Hiya, Hank. Uh, howdy, fellas. Hello, Jackson. I suppose you spent all the gold you took out of here last <laughs> spring, eh? Yep, sure do it, Slick. But I had a good time when it lasted, yes, sir. <laughs> I figure there's lots more where that come from, so I come back. You sourdoughs never know when you've got enough, seems like. Well, with new ones coming up here all the time, you never know when the gold will give out, Slick. Hmm. You know, the only fella I ever met who wasn't coming up here to make his way was a young fella I met in Skagway. Oh? What did he come up for, then? Yeah. Don't tell me he likes this winter climate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He, uh, he come up here trailing some hombre who framed him into jail. Been trailing him nigh on to a year now, and uh, finally heard he was hanging out in his vicinity. Mm. Who is it he's after, Hank? Well, now, sir, I asked him that a couple of times on the way up here, but he wouldn't tell me. Said he's out to gun the hombre down, and I might warn him. What's the fella's name? Maybe he's been up this way before. Nope, nope, he hasn't. Seems like he came up from San Francisco. His name is Ned Tyler. Tyler, huh? Yep, Ned Tyler. Fella about 25. I wonder who he's gunning for. I don't know, but I'm glad it isn't me. <laughs> I reckon he'll be coming in here to look around later. So you all better think back to see if you ever framed any young fella into jail, huh? I the young <laughs> fool would hang if he gunned anyone here in the Yukon openly. Sure. Yep, I reckon he would at that, but it seems like he don't care if he does. Of course, if he was clever like you, Slick, he'd probably hire a couple of gunslingers to do the job somewhere out of town and... He'd keep away so he'd have an alibi just in case. Now, what makes you think I'd do something like that? Well, now, I just use you an example, that's all. After Hank left the cafe, Slick Baker called two of his men into the back office. Come in, boys. Sit down a minute. Hey, what's up, Slick? Yeah, what's on your mind? You heard what Hank Jackson was saying a while ago. You mean about the young guy who was gunning for somebody up this way? Yeah. What about it, Slick? Just this. 
That fool Ned Tyler is here to get me. You? Holy mackerel, what for? We knew each other in San Francisco. He thinks I framed him in a jail three years ago. Well, did you? Never mind that. The point is, he's here in Whitehorse right now, ready to put a bullet in me. If you're ready for him, you can gun him first. Now, don't be a fool. Think I want to hang for murder? Well, then what are you going to do? I'm giving the job to you and Lefty. Wait a minute. Wally and I don't want to hang either. You'll do what I tell you. I've got enough on both of you already to have you hang. Now, now, calm down, Slick. Yeah, no use going overboard. Don't be so jumpy. If it was ever found out he came here gunning for me, then he was found dead, I'd have to have a darn good alibi. Yeah, that's right. And what are we supposed to do? Go up to that old cabin on Bear Creek and wait there. When he comes up there, you get rid of him. Toss his body in the gully. He might never be found. Well, what makes you think he'll come to that old cabin? Yeah, I can't figure that out either. He'll be coming here today, and soon, I figure. I'll have Mary Ames, the singer here, get talking to him before he starts asking around or mentioning who he's hunting for. I'll tell Mary just what to say. I guarantee he'll go to the cabin before tonight. Well, you think Mary will do it when she hears what's going to happen to him? She won't know what it's about, so don't worry. She'll jump at the chance to make a hundred dollars, and she'll keep her mouth shut, too. Now get going, and don't slip up, or you might be sorry. Later, Slick sat at a back table with the girl singer, Mary Ames, when the door of the cafe opened and Ned Tyler entered. What? There he is, Mary. You know what to say. Sure. Don't worry. I'll slip into the back office and keep on sight. I'll go to it. I'll manage all right. <laughs> Hello, mister. Oh, howdy, ma'am. You look like a stranger here, so I thought I'd speak to you. I'm Mary Ames. Glad to know you. I'm Ned Tyler. Uh, there's a table over there. Shall we sit down? Well, I... <laughs> I just thought you'd like someone to talk to until you get acquainted with the other. Oh, sure. Thanks. <sighs> you are new here, aren't you, Mr. Tyler? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Got in town last night. Did you come far? Oh, I came from Skagway, but actually I'm from Frisco. Left there a year ago. Oh, really? From San Francisco, huh? Say, there's another man here from San Francisco, too. You ought to know each other. Was oh, that right? What's his name? Baker. They call him Slick Baker. Huh. Slick Baker, huh? And did you know him back in San Francisco by any chance? Could be, but uh, it's a mighty big place, you know. <laughs> Of course. You can't expect a person to know everybody there like they do up here. No, no, that's right. You know, you really ought to meet Slick Baker. You're both so far from home. Why, yeah, maybe so. Where is he? Oh, he has a claim up on Bear Creek. The fact is, he's been thinking of taking a partner. Say, maybe if you went to see him this afternoon, you could come to terms with him, being from the same hometown and all. Why, oh, it's worth thinking about it then. It's very easy to find. Just go out the Bear Creek Trail about two miles. His cabin is on the right. Well, thanks for telling me, man. It's a good idea now that I think about it. If you'll excuse me, I'll go get my dog team and head up that way to see him. Oh, fine. I'm sure you two will get along. Let me know how you make out. Goodbye. Goodbye, ma'am. Leaving the cafe, Ned Tyler went immediately to Sergeant Preston's cabin, where Preston was waiting with Hank. Ned told them what had happened. I suspected he'd have someone posted to get to you and direct you to some place outside of town. Yeah, I reckon he figures on having Ned go there, and he'll be waiting with a couple of gunslingers, eh? Yes, but frankly, I didn't think that Mary Ames would be a part of his plan. Oh, that's what bothered me, too, Sergeant. She seems like a mighty nice girl. Oh, yeah, sure. Nice enough to send you to your death, looks like. Well, now what do we do? You and Hank go get your dog team. King and I'll meet you at the edge of town in about a half an hour. All right, Sergeant. Let's go, Hank. About ten minutes after Ned and Hank had left the cabin, there was a knock at the door. Quiet, boy. Sergeant Preston, I must talk to you. Come in, Mary. Thanks. Well, there isn't much time, Sergeant. Please, please believe what I tell you and do something. What's happened? It's about a young man, a stranger named Ned Tyler. What about him? I don't know where to find him, but I... Well, I'll be to blame if he gets killed. I... Oh, I was a fool to do what Slick told me to. Take it easy, Mary. I know Tyler, and I know what you said to him. What? 
I'll see him before he leaves for Bear Creek. Oh, thank heaven. Don't let him go. Here's money Slick gave me to talk to Tyler and to keep quiet. Why are you changing your mind? Well, I didn't know what it meant at the time. Slick said he had a reason for getting Tyler out of town for a short time so he could talk to him in private. I see. I found out Slick had sent Wally and Lefty to that cabin. I asked him why and told him I didn't like the looks of things. What did he say to that? He laughed and said to keep my mouth shut. And that if I didn't, I might be charged with murder along with Wally and Lefty. I sneaked away and came right here. I'm awfully glad you did, Mary. Slick still in town? Yes. He sent his two gunmen to... I understand. Mary. Slick did Tyler a great wrong in the past. Are you willing to help me straighten things out? Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be glad to help. Good. I want you to write a note to Slick Baker. I'll see it's delivered to him. And give me the key to your cabin and stay here with King on guard. Slick Baker will find he's not so clever after all. Mary wrote a note dictated by Sergeant Preston. And then leaving King on guard in case of a slip-up, the sergeant went to meet Ned and Hank, taking the note and the key to Mary's cabin with him. Half an hour later, the barkeep at the cafe entered Slick's office. Hey, Slick. Indian brought in this note for you a couple of minutes ago. Oh, thanks, thanks. Hey, this is from Mary Ames. Did she leave the cafe? Yeah, I saw her go out a while ago. Seems sort of upset, too. What's she say in the note? None of your business. Get out of here while I read it. All right, all right. Let's see. Here's Slick. What you told me has upset me very much. If you come to my cabin, I'll give back the money you gave me and tell you what I intend to do. I don't intend ever to come inside that cafe again. Mary, why that double-crossing little fool? I'll get over there right away and find out what she's up to. A short time later, Slick Baker approached Mary's cabin. I'm going to show her she can't pull any tricks on me. I guess she didn't hear the knock. It's too cold to wait. I'll go on in. Howdy, Slick. What? Ned Tyler. What are you doing here? I thought... You Ma thought I was on my way to Bear Creek. Is that it? I don't get this. But one thing I do notice is you don't have a gun, and I do. No need to be hasty, Slick. Now, where's Mary? I suggested she go uptown and let me meet you alone. After explaining a few things to her, I asked her to send you a note so I could meet you in private. She said she would. Well, I've been wanting to meet you in private. Now, look, Slick. Like you say, I haven't got a gun. I decided instead of gunning for you, I'd talk you into squaring things with me by staking me to some cash. Say about $750. That'd be half of what you got when I went to jail. <laughs> you must think I'm a fool. Oh, no, no, not exactly, Slick. Since the girl knows I'm meeting you here without a gun, I figured you couldn't take a chance of killing me and hanging for murder. Mary wouldn't dare open her mouth about the truth. I'd say I came here to see Mary and found you robbing the place. And she'd bear me out, too. Or else have to admit she tried to send you into a trap I planned on Bear Creek. But why shoot me? I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. If you stake me like I said, maybe later I could even work with you at the cafe. Oh, no, I, I never trust you, Tyler. You wouldn't forget this quick after a year of hunting for me. You always were smarter than I was, Slick. <laughs> when I think of how easy you put it over on me in the bank that time, I, I feel downright foolish. You hadn't been such a stupid fool. You'd have protected yourself by counting that money again before putting it away. Uh, framing a dope like you was the easiest thing I ever did. Then you admit you did frame me, What huh? if I do admit it? I've had enough of this. I'm getting you out of my hair once and for all right now, Tyler. Oh! oh. Good work, Ned. I can I heard all that was said. Baker failed to see that the door was slightly open. Well, man alive, I sure was nervous. I felt like a clay pigeon here without a gun, Sergeant. Baker, I oh. could break you in two with my hands for what you did. Oh, let go of my, my arm. No, oh, get away from me. Oh. Baker, I'm taking you in for attempted murder. Also, you'll have to answer for the embezzlement for which Tyler got the blame. Come on, Hank. Let's get him out of here, and then we'll get the other two. That's right, Some time later, Wally and Lefty were waiting in the cabin on Bear Creek when a knock was heard. Uh oh, there's that guy, Tyler. 
Well, you must be Tyler. Come on in. Look out. He has a gun. Hey, Mounty's with him. Out. Oh, you look. Oh, I'll get Tyler. Ned stood between Lefty and Preston and was momentarily off guard. Look out, Ned. But as Lefty raised his gun, King, who had come with Preston and the others, went into instant action, grabbing hey, Lefty's gun arm. Come, King. Easy, fella. Watch them, boy. You two are finished. Baker's already in jail, and I'm taking both of you in. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Later, back at Sergeant Preston's cabin, Preston and Hank smiled knowingly as Mary attempted to explain to Ned Tyler. I, I really didn't know what it was all about. Oh, the I... sergeant told me all about it, ma'am. It's all right. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tyler. I... Oh, look, if you want to call me Ned, I, I'd sort of like it. Well, all right, Ned. And remember, my name is Mary. <laughs> Golly, I... <laughs> Say, I bet a fella could make enough up here to marry and settle down someday. Don't you think, Hank? <laughs> well, I reckon so, Ned. Leastwise, there's a lot of them doing it. You uh, haven't found any gold yet, but, uh, well, looks like you've got a good start in another direction, uh, King. <laughs> <laughs> Why, I really believe King knows what Hank said. Maybe so, Mary. Anyway, I know he must be as happy as we are that this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. What's that dribble? It's in! It's a basket! Whether it's basketball you like to play or any other sport, you need a hearty breakfast. So start tomorrow morning to enjoy a heaping bowlful of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Quaker puffed wheat and rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And they're shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with swell nut-like flavor, too. Don't wait. It's the hearty breakfast you like to eat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Swindler's Luck. Stephen Avis Parker came to Dawson to collect a legacy. A week later, I found out they'd used the money to buy a worthless claim. It looked as though they'd been neatly swindled and there was nothing I could do about it. But the case brought plenty of surprises for everyone concerned. Before it was over, I walked straight into a blast of gunfire from hidden killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.